And Kincaid from Nightmare 3 would also return as the Dream Police. This is real. In the script, Taryn was the Blade Cop, Joey was the Sound Cop, and Kincaid was the Power Cop. Also involves Freddy's foster father coming back to discipline him in the final act. This script is available online. I have read it. Holy fuck. That sounds batshit insane. If you, Please make that. If you don't like this movie... You just find out what it could have been. A right? Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Cops. Jesus. <laughs> this, this script is awful. Like, really awful. Um, Although I'd still want to see it just because for just Oh, no, sheer it's just batshit insane. Like, I would love somebody to animate it. You yeah, know what I mean? Just, just sheer, do that. Sheer ridiculous. Um, which is funny because... Like Dream PD or whatever? Yeah, because the thing is, is that Michael... I can't pronounce the name. I apologize. Um, he doesn't get credit on the final script. Right. But there is more... Of this script in the final product than there was from the last flick from the other two assholes who well, fought to get credit. that's not hard when it was literally three <laughs> words was taken from the script and nothing, or, nothing else. Because, like, there are settings that are the same. Like, it, the movie literally starts with the with Jacob in a plane instead of John, John Doe. I mean, it become, it's a much bigger thing because another plane flies into it to cause the problems. But, essentially, he still falls but out a of a plane. A plane is involved. Yeah, and then falls into a house, and then the house rises up and falls down. Like, they took some things from it, but he didn't get credit. They left the dream cops out of it. Yeah, thank God. Uh, but those assholes got credit for the last one, so I never understood that. Um, Hollywood. Yeah. This script was scrapped when they couldn't secure Lisa Wilcox to return as Alice. I love that that's what did it in. Well, it was that, and Rachel stated that she greatly disliked the original script, and that the replacement script by yeah, Michael DeLuca saved fucking dream the day. Cops. Well, she helped write it. But I think even she was just like, we're idiots, let's not do this. Let's not do dream cops. <laughs> yeah, let's let's leave the dream cops out of this. Um, DeLuca also said that he was surprised he wasn't asked to write the screenplay in the first place since he had done a similar last-minute rewrite on Nightmare 5. Hmm. Now, Michael DeLuca, <laughs> there's a rumor. Now, I don't know if it's true, but I kind of want to put this out there because I think it's pretty funny. Is that Because he doesn't work for New Line anymore. And the rumor was, even though it states that he resigned... The rumor was that he got fired because he got caught during a Christmas party getting a blowjob in the parking lot. Jesus. I don't believe that that's true. No. But I like that story. Um, anyway. The Huffus Christmas parties, huh? <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Getting fired for that seems kind of stupid because I'm sure there was a lot of people fucking in the Christmas party. That's what they do. It's a Christmas party. I've, I've never, seen movies. <laughs> yeah. I've never, I've never worked in an office, but, you know, I assume. Uh, the intent they had with this movie was to make the film kind of fun. And since it was airing at the same time, uh, it, was, fun. <laughs> it was heavily influenced by the TV series Twin Peaks. Uh, ooh, well, they do reference Twin Peaks. Twin mm-hmm. Peaks they literally say it quite at one directly. point. Yeah. Uh, you know, that tracks a bit, I mean. I haven't seen it, and it's it, this, literally that line that she says, it's like to where he, that, um, uh, what's his name? Carlos? No, the other one. And Spencer. I'm, Spencer, thank you. I can I can remember the actor's name, but I couldn't remember the character's name. Uh, that he says about Twin Peaks is the reason I've wanted to see that show. I haven't gotten around to it, but I wanted to based on that one line. Really? I'm obsessed with this fucking movie. Um, the weirdest recommendation from the weirdest place. Not really. Not really all that strange. <laughs> you heard a, t- a show title in a movie, now you want to see the, the show. I've watched shit for weirder reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, they reuse most of the crew from the John Waters film Crybaby. Oh, we'll get there some fucking day. Uh, Which yeah, was produced by Rachel Taylor Lay. That movie is fucking batshit insane. We will cover that someday. Yeah, because John Waters is yeah. batshit insane in the most wonderful way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I we'll, love John Waters. I do, too. We, I'm pretty sure we will do a theme month of John Waters. Um, and this is... And Crybaby is a movie I've seen a shit ton of times because my sister was obsessed with it. So I've seen it a lot. Because uh, Johnny Depp. Mm, no. No. She's never really been into Johnny Depp. Mm. I was the fan of Johnny Depp. You know, he was in this. And I didn't know he was in the original. I didn't know why he showed up in this, but... Oh, and then, it, then, you and then it, eventually then it I saw sense. it, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Um, so, Ricky Dean Logan, who plays Carlos, was originally, originally cast as John Doe. He said that the role of Carlos simply spoke to him more, so he went for that instead. Good choice. Um... He is definitely Carlos. He would not have worked as John Doe. Um, The guy that worked as John Doe didn't work as John Doe. He's not a great actor. Um, (laughs) There's a reason we don't see him again. Um, As far as I know, he didn't really do anything, or at least nothing of note. 
Ricky Dean Logan is has gone up to that asshole status. He's in everything. He pops up in everything. I'd rather be that guy. I'll be mm. honest with you. Mm. Your work, because then eventually you become someone like William H Macy, where you yeah you you're that guy for so long before you're, and then they're just like you know what, just put him in something big. Well, he never got that. Yeah, he's well, been around a while. Hey, listen, no. but William H Macy's an outlier but, when it comes to character. Yeah, actors. that's true. Um, he finally found his niche in Shameless. Yeah. Um, however, you have seen Ricky Dean Logan before. Uh, we all have. In Back to the Future Part 2. He's a member of Biff's gang, mm-hmm. the young Biff, and he's the one who says, those boards don't work on water. You gotta have power. You remember that guy who delivers that weird-ass line? Yeah. That would be Carlos, my friend. Um, so, yeah. Huh. In case you're wondering, same guy. Uh, this was Breckenmeyer's first theatrical role. You mean 90, 1990s treasure Breckenmeyer? Yep. <laughs> you may know him from Clueless. He was the stoner skateboarder. He didn't get out of the 90s. He did not. Um, I put these in a weird order, but whatever, we'll just go with it. Uh, when Freddie... <laughs> I'm literally talking about Leslie Dean. I should have switched these up, but I'm not going to bother, so fuck it. When Freddie punches Tracy in the face during their fight, Robert England actually punched her. Oops. Yep, that happened. Uh, yeah, there's like literally a thing that I should have had that's like next two pages. Well, he now. needs to watch it because it was the glove hand, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, so um, yeah. And that was fucking metal, too. That yeah. is a metal plate on the top of that. Um, Concussion! Yeah. Uh, get dark for one second. While playing the abused character, Tracy led Leslie Dean to realize that she had repressed memories of being abused as a child. Oops. Yeah, but that's not good. That's a box you don't want opened. Yeah. Uh, during her audition, Leslie and Rachel actually started fighting, kind of sparring in character. Like Razzlin or? Just sort of like verbally sparring. Okay. And probably like jumping around and kind of punching the way that she was kind of like going at Carlos. Like, come on, man, let's spar. What are you, fucking chicken? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, coincidentally, Leslie also starred in Robert England's directorial debut, 1988's 976 Evil. Breath. Jesus. I want to love everything Robert England does, but that movie fucking sucks. Um, yeah, it's pretty shit. Um, well, that's what people are gonna say after they listen to this episode, going, "Dude, this movie is." I, yeah, but I don't make fucking. I don't attempt to say it's good. Right. Um, but you don't even like that movie for the sheer. No, there's know, no, it's... there's no like. Oh my god! At least this is hilarious, or I can't believe this shit got yeah. made. It's, it's just, a flat... it's just like wow, this is not good. It's just a flat um, movie. It is directed well. He does know how to direct people. Like the performances are fine. It's the movie's fucking idiotic. Um, so Lisa Zane, who is in fact a jazz singer, wrote and performed a James Bond esque ballad, "The Worst Is Over," that was meant for the end credits. The worst. <laughs> They did not use it. No. Um, God damn it, because then you could have, like, Freddy, like, with the gun barrel. And the, like, and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they did I... it for Jason once, didn't they? They did, actually. So, I mean, fuck. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not against it. Um, so, during filming, Sean Greenblatt had two days off. During that time, his brother had a brain aneurysm. Ooh. Because Sean was able to get him to the hospital he lived. Hey. So it literally good. happened at the exact moment he had two days off. Right on. That's good. Good stuff. Um, so let's get into the film itself. They did not have Nintendo's permission to mock the Power Glove. Oops. Uh, initially, they wanted to use a Power Glove. Nintendo denied them. So when it came time to make the joke, Rachel asked Bob if they should take the joke out for fear of getting sued. Because Nintendo sued everybody at this point. Uh, Bob said no. Let them sue if they want. Shockingly, Nintendo didn't sue. Fuck you, I'm Bob Shea, bitch. Kind of. That was pretty much the implication that she was getting in that interview, was this was how it is. Um, shockingly, Nobody comes into my town and sues Bob Shea. Although Nintendo would have won that lawsuit, so Bob should shut the fuck up. I just like that he, he speaks. He says his whole name and he refers to himself in the third person. I'm, I'm Robert Shea, damn it. Um... They, they didn't sue, which is weird, but it's probably because the Power Glove was discontinued a year prior, and they were probably distancing themselves from it. It's so bad. <laughs> it really is. Thank you, Lucas. Um, I own a Power Glove, and yeah, it is so bad. It <laughs> is a piece of on, shit. That line works on several mm-hmm. different levels. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> um, Carlos' death scene, which is Robert England's favorite of the series. was Really? Yeah. I mean, it's you can't not find that funny. 
A lot um, of people didn't find it funny. Yeah, but those people are morons. That is just genius. Um, it's stupid, but it's, genius. It's the air humping that does it. I mean, what else is Freddy going to do? You know what I mean? That seems perfectly normal for Freddy. To air hump something? Come on. The man's... This is Freddy having the most fun, and I do have a theory behind that, but I'll get to that after. Um, it was filmed in a location where the owners didn't want fake blood anywhere, which is good, can, you know, they were about to blow his head up. Bob initially came up with an idea of digitally turning piece, digitally turning the pieces that explode into an organic jigsaw puzzle, which Rachel, Rachel wishes she could have actually done, but time, budget... Lots of things. Uh, it's 1991, it. Bob. No. You could have done it. They could have done it. It wouldn't, wouldn't have looked look good. good. It wouldn't have looked good. I mean, what they did was so much better because it looked good, but what they could have done would have probably looked like shit, but they could have done it. Um, stop looking. The 7 8 Better Stay Up Late was never filmed. No one has ever said why. So if you watch the film, you can see, you know, every now, everywhere they look, eventually it's written somewhere 1 2 Freddy's Coming for You, 3 4 Better Lock Your Door, 5 6 Grab a Crucifix. 7 8 Better Stay Up Late was not filmed. And it's not in the movie. And they just jumped to 910. And they just jumped to 910. If I ever get to meet Rachel Taylor, which is very unlikely, she doesn't do conventions or anything, I need to ask why, because no one seems to give a shit, and I need to know why somebody somewhere didn't be like, hey, we're keeping all of these in the, in the film. Maybe we should take five minutes and film something. You'll get, like, the most Hollywood, like, they didn't have time, kid. No, she's pretty good at fucking being like, no, here's why. Okay. Um, she She's done interviews where she, and I'm about to get to some of them where she's like, okay, this was dumb and I wish we hadn't done it. So she's not, she's not opposed to shitting on her own product. So just, it's one of the reasons why I like her. She's chucked full of regret. Kind of, no, she's not that way. No, she's proud of it. Oh, God. Um, the one, the one interview. I worked so hard just to get here, and this is what happened. <laughs> the one interview, uh, the one interviewee who was not happy in an interview I found was Bob Shea. He tried his goddamnedest to be diplomatic, but he, he you can hear him just going, yeah, no. Robert Shea does not strike me as a man who has a filter. So he'll no, just, he does. He absolutely does. does. He absolutely does. He's not the crazy person we think he is. He absolutely does have a filter. But it's only a filter for his own shit. Oh, uh, Like, he's okay. going to defend somebody his, else. Because, like... trust me, I looked up, because ne- I didn't even remember that he directed something. Because this, doc- this uh, interview I got from was from the fucking... Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street encyclopedia that's on the 1999 DVD set. Okay. This is this whole fucking thing. And I found this interview with him, and he talks about, and they, or no, sorry, the interview with Rachel where she talks about the movie that he directed. I'm like, he directed a movie? Fuck me, I gotta go look this up. And what was the name of it? It was like, uh, fuck, where was it? It was like, uh, Book of Love. Oh, Book of Love, yeah. It's a teen movie looks so bad so bad but i guarantee if you asked him today he'd be like oh it was a great picture it just didn't didn't hit the box office the way it should over some no. such nonsense he with his own shit he will fucking backpedal like a motherfucker the but only everybody time, else will tell him to go fuck himself the only time you really get a no oh, wasn't that bad is mostly actors yeah because if they had fun doing the movie yeah the movie was bad or good whatever there's like, like i just whatever. remember having fun filming yeah, the movie I just, exactly so, which is usually the universal. like budget and box office that's not my problem yeah it's like just, we made the movie i got paid it was great life we was good liked for me it. we would have liked it to make money so maybe there's a sequel but otherwise i had fun fuck yeah it. um to make the dream demon cgi oh god ease up we'll get there they went to the same company that was working on Terminator 2. They accidentally sl- sent a clip of T2 with the Freddy's Dead footage. If that footage had gotten out, lawsuits abound. So, Rachel jokes in an interview of like, yeah, we could have just easily fucking thrown in some T2 footage because we had it. We shouldn't have, but we had it. There was like a scene with, uh, one of the scenes with um, uh, Arnold on a bike. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that would have been weird. Like, that would have been, but why is Arnold Schwarzenegger in this movie for? He's he's driving toward Freddy or away from Freddy because he's afraid. I don't know. Make that movie. I'd watch that. Terminator versus Freddy. Fucker <laughs> just got drop kicked last week and didn't feel it, so I still believe he could fight Freddy. That's true. Mm. When the movie was in, okay, so this is where we get into a little weirdness. So when the movie was in uh, U.S. theaters in 1991, it ran 100 minutes long. End of the movie. Oh, sorry, what? I wrote my weird shit down. End of the movie. Okay, sorry. No. End of the movie. What the hell? <laughs> I fucked my own shit up. Oh, I really wrote this badly. 
Bear with me. I forgot to proofread this one section. My apologies.